swirling lights. Miles follows the friendly wizard. <laughs> Jean checked back over his shoulder to make sure the funny-looking little man, no taller than himself, was still following all right. Even in the dusk, it was clear that the druggie was a grown-up, not another kid as Jin had hoped at first glance. He had a grown-up voice, his words precise and complicated, despite their tired slur and his strange accent, low and rumbly. He moved almost as stiff and slow as old Yanni. But when his fleeting smiles lifted the strain from his face, it looked oddly kind in an accustomed way, as if smiles were at home there. Grouchy Yanni never smiled. Jean wondered if the little man had been beaten up, but why? Blood stained his torn trouser knees and his white shirt bore browning smears. For a plain shirt, it looked pretty fancy, as if before being rolled around in, it had been crisp and fine. But Jean couldn't quite figure out how that effect was done. Never mind. He had this novel creature all to himself for now. When they came to the metal ladder running up the outside of the exchanger building, Jean looked at the blood stains and stiffness and thought to ask, can you climb? The little man stared upward. It's not my favorite activity. How far up does this castle keep really go? Just to the top. <laughs> two stories. He added in a low mutter of 20. Jean said, just three. My hideout's on the roof. The hideout part sounds good. The man looked at his cracked lips with a dry-looking tongue. He really did need water, Jean guessed. Maybe you'd better go first in case I slip. I have to go last to raise the ladder. No, all right. A small square hand reached out to grip a rung. Up, up is good, right? He paused, drew a breath, then lurched skyward. Jean followed as lightly as a lizard. Three meters up, he stopped to crank the ratchet that raised the ladder out of the reach of the unauthorized and latch it. Up another three meters, he came to the place where the rungs were replaced by broad steel staples bolted to the building's side. The little man had managed them, but now seemed stuck on the ledge. Where am I now, he called back to Jean in tense tones. I can feel a drop, but I can't be sure how far down it really goes. But it wasn't that dark. Just roll over and fall as you can't lift yourself. The edge wall's only about half a meter high. Ah, the sock feet swung out and disappeared. Jean heard a thump and a grunt. He popped over the parapet to find the little man sitting up on the flat rooftop, fingers scraping at the grid as if seeking a handhold on the surface. Oh, are you afraid of heights? Jean asked, feeling dumb for not asking sooner. Not normally. Dizzy. Sorry. Jean helped him up. The man did not shrug off his hand, so Jean led him on around the twin exchanger towers of the children, ran around the box to greet him, clucking and chuckling. Oh, God, now I see chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Stopping short. I suppose they could be related to the angels. Wings, after all. <laughs> Quit that twig, said Jean sternly to the brown hen, and seemed inclined to peck at his guest's trouser leg. Jean shoved her aside with his foot. I didn't bring you any food yet. Later. You see chickens too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're mine. The white one is Galley, the brown one is Twig, and the black and white speckled one is Mrs. Speck. Those are all her babies, though I guess they're not really babies anymore. Half grown and molting, the brood didn't look too appetizing. In fact, Jean almost apologized for as the men continued to peer down into the shadows of their greeting party. I named her Galley because the scientific name of the chicken is Gallus Gallus, you know. A cheerful name, sounding like Gallop Gallop, which always made Jean smile. Makes sense, the man said, and let Jean tug him onward. As they rounded the corner, Jean automatically checked to be sure the roof of discarded tarps and drop cloths that he'd rigged on poles between the two exchanger towers was still holding firm sheltering his animal family. The tent made a cozy space, bigger than his bedroom, in fact, before he shied from that memory. He let go of the stranger long enough to jump up on the chair and switch on the hand light, hanging by a scrap of wire from the ridge pole, which cast a bright circle of illumination over his secret kingdom, as good as any ceiling fixtures. The man flung his, uh, flung his arm up over his reddened eyes, and Jean dimmed the light to something softer. As Jean stepped back down, Lucky rose from the bedroll atop the mattress of shred flimsies, stretched and hopped toward him, meowing, then rose on her hind legs to place her one front paw imploringly on Jean's knee, kneading her claws. Jean bent and scratched her fuzzy gray ears. 
No dinner yet, Bucky. But that cat does have three legs, right? <laughs> he sounded nervous. Jean hoped he wasn't allergic to cats. Yeah, she got one in the dorm when she was a kitten. I didn't name her. She was my mom's cat. Jean clutched his teeth. He didn't need to have added that last. She's just a Felis Domesticus. Jire the falcon gave one ear-splitting shriek from his perch, and the black and white rats rustled in their cages. Jean called greetings to them all. When food was not immediately forthcoming, they all settled back in a disgruntled way. Do you like rats? Jean eagerly asked his guest. I'll let you hold Jeannie if you want. She's the friendliest. Maybe later, said the man faintly. Seemed to take in Jean's disappointed look, and after a squinting glance at the shelf of cages, and I like rats fine. I'm just afraid I'd drop her. Still a bit shaky. I was lost in the crowd comes for a rather long Jean button. Oh, your water. Yes, please, said the man. This is a chair, right? He was gripping the back of Jean's late step stool, leaning on it. The scratched round table beside it, discarded from some cafe and the prize of an alley scavenge, had been a bit wobbly, but custodian Tenbury had showed Jean how to fix it with a few shims and tacks. Yeah, sit. I'm sorry there's only one, but usually I'm the only person who comes up here. You get it, because you're the guest. As the man dropped into the old plastic cafeteria chair, Jean rumbled on the shelves for his leader water bottle, uncapped it, and handed it over. I'm sorry I don't have a cup. You don't mind drinking where my mouth was? Not at all, said the man, raised the bottle and gulped thirstily. He stopped suddenly when it was about three-fourths empty to ask, Wait, is this all your water? No, no, there's a tap on the outsides of each of these old heat exchanger towers. One's broken, but the custodian hooked up the other one for me when I moved all my pets up here. He let me rig my tent, too. The secretaries wouldn't let me keep my animals inside anymore because the smell and the noise bothered some folks. I like it better up here anyway. Drink all you want. I can just fill it up again. The little man drained the bottle and, taking Jean at his word, handed it back. More, please? Jean dashed out to the tap and refilled the bottle, taking a moment to rinse and top up the chicken's water pan at the same time. His guest drank another half liter without stopping, then rested his eyes sagging shut. Jean tried to figure out how old the man was. His face was pale and furrowed, with sprays of fine lines at the corners of his eyes, and his chin was shadowed with a dazed beard stubble, but that could come from being lost below, which would unsettle anybody. <coughs> his dark hair was neatly cut, a few gleams of gray showing in the light. His body seemed more scaled down than distorted, sturdy enough, though his head, set on a short neck, was a bit big for him. Jean decided to work around to his curiosity more sideways to be polite. What's your name, mister? The man's eyes flew open. They were clear gray in color and would probably be bright if they weren't so bloodshot. If the fellow had been bigger, his seedy looks might have alarmed Jean more. Miles. Miles is a... Well, the rest is a mouthful no one here seems able to pronounce. You can just call me Miles. And what's your name, young person? Jean Chateau, said Jean. Do you live on this roof? Jean shrugged. Pretty much. Nobody climbs up to bother me. The lift tubes inside don't work. He led on. I'm almost 12. And then, deciding he'd been polite enough, added, How old are you? <laughs> I'm almost 38. From the other direction. <laughs> he digested this. A disappointingly old person, therefore likely to be stodgy, if not so old as Yanni, but then it was hard to know how to count Yanni's age. You have a funny accent. Are you from around 